Okay, let's address the first tutorial. So this is the famous uh, drawing cavity, very popular. So what we're going to do is work it out in three meshes. So the orthogonal mesh, the perfect mesh that we have. So just to run it out, we're going to have a uh, perfect mesh with the reference solution, but then we're going to go to a not very good mesh, okay? And we're going to see that first, it's going to diverge immediately. So we're going to, to, to address how to improve or how to get it working, okay? Because we need to add a lot of corrections. And then we go to a mesh that it's a little bit non-orthogonal, it's good quality, but also we're going to see that it will run. But as you see here, it doesn't have a very good agreement with the orthogonal mesh. So how we can improve the solution. So as you can see, this is a very easy problem but if you don't add those corrections you will get into problems okay so the important thing to address in the theory okay let me go here you can download all, all the, the, the whole presentation so the specific part that here we're going to talk about just non orthogonality and the diffuse stir which is the important one that is the one that will give problems here so as you go to the presentation let me Uh, let me go. So just to remind you, these are the, the, the errors that you can have in a mesh. So usually orthogonal and non skew mesh, this is what we want, but this is the section rather than the reality. So you also have a combination of these errors. So in the mesh, the very bad one that we're going to use, or not the bad one, it still is a good mesh, but you will have a mix of all these errors that will reduce the accuracy and also will make your solver unstable. So you know, open from what we have to address those problems, we go in particular here where I'm pressing. So we have the Laplacian terms, okay? Well, we have specifically addressed this one and you have all these methods implemented to add corrections, okay? So basically you have four bit families, okay? The most important ones that orthogonal, corrected, limited, and corrected, okay? So most of the time you will stay with, the, you will use just the limited, okay? So the limited will consist in doing this correction, okay? So you will have an orthogonal contribution, an orthogonal contribution, and you will have a coefficient that you will add in the limit, in the limited one. That coefficient will multiply, let's say, this term to avoid that it will become larger than this one and will add or oscillations, okay? So orthogonal is a central difference, simple as it, but as you can see, orthogonal is just for perfect, perfect mesh and also uniform meshes. The minute that is still you have an orthogonal mesh, but you add non-uniformity or growth rate, this is not valid anymore. So you need to add a correction that will be the corrected one that it will correct for that non-uniformity. Okay, that we see better here. So if you have this mesh, you can use non-orthogonal method, but also, you can use the limited one or corrected that it will deal with this one. So you can see that orthogonal is something that don't use it never. Okay, always use limited one that it will take into account everything. And in this see this mesh this also is a perfect orthogonal mesh, but as you have non-uniformity, then orthogonal is not good anymore. And then when you start to add non-orthogonality, see that we uh, can add this correction limited 0 0.5. And usually when you have unstructured measures, my advice is just to go limited 0 0.5. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And just to remind you how you set up this one, the Laplacian schemes. So here is that you put limited and then you have the, the say this blending factor that it will give you the amount of correction. But what is this doing is just multiplying the non-orthogonal part by this coefficient. So the non-orthogonal part never exceeds, uh, exceed the orthogonal part. Okay, so basically multiply this one, but that coefficient, so you never exceed that one, and you keep your solution bounded. So you can lose a little bit of accuracy, but you're going, uh, you're getting stability. So let's go and work it out here. So I hope you download the tutorial. So we go here into driven cavity, launch your terminal. So open from seven and let's go first to the orthogonal case. Okay. So I want to show you also that in every case you will find this script that it, they will run everything automatically. Okay. So as you type SH run all, it will run everything automatically and it will do post processing everything. Okay. So see that we have the solution. We have a reference solution and then our current solution. So as you see, 
a perfect match we have here or not a perfect uh, very good uh agreement with the reference solution okay and i want to close and then if i launch paraview let's see what we have apply so I see that we have this perfect mesh and in a perfect mesh you have here the flow so basically in this case wall 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 and here we have a velocity moving in this way and this will in induce this motion okay so this is what we have very simple case but as we're going to see that by just having not very good meshes it can be tricky to get it converged so as we go to the pneumatics in this scheme we're going to focus in this case and in particular we're going to focus here Laplacian skins see that we're using the orthogonal method okay so this is this method is only valid when you have this perfect mesh uniform orthogonal mesh okay so let me clean that one and now let's move to the second to the other case that now we are going to add that non orthogonality so we go to this directory crucial mesh okay so sometimes those meshes are referred as crucial and let's run okay and see that okay here we're what we're plotting reference solution the solution of the orthogonal mesh but the solver diverges you look at your terminal see that is diverging so as Let's see what is happening. So what's also important that if I run here check mesh, you will see that check mesh will report that we have some non-orthogonality, okay? So it's 75, okay? So this is not an error. This is just telling you that it's a little bit high, so it might be a good idea to add some kind of correction, okay? So as you go, Let's open the two dictionaries that we're going to work it out here. So something important that maybe you will say that, okay, is that Virgin? Uh, here we're using uh, the solver, I think, uh, piece of phone. It's in a steady, so probably you would think that, okay, I will reduce my time state and it might add a little bit more stability, but it will make your solution longer and it still it will diverge. So we should look at what to do in the numerical schemes. So if we open as the skin, look at here, Laplacian skin, this is the first mistake that we have. See that we're using the orthogonal method in this mesh, okay, that shouldn't be this method. So let's see what is the, what, what, what the mesh looks like. So if I open here and plot, this is what we have. And see that we have all the errors that you can imagine living together. So you have large, no orthogonality here, but also you have large excuses here, okay, which is within the limits, uh, the, the limits, but also see that you have here uh, large aspect, rate, uh, aspect radius, but also large uh, growth rate. So see the solution is changing from large cells here to small one, ones very fast. So this is not desirable. So all these errors are living together and making and are making your solver diverge. Okay. And just to show you that it's not because you have this one, this high north tonality, let me do another modification here. I will open and instead of using this one, I will use another mesh very similar to this one. Okay. Is a variant as well. And if I run check mesh, see that it's not complaining anymore. See that actually in orthogonality is within, let's say, those limits, okay, or within the limits of open from that open from take it 70 is a little bit high. 60 something is a good value. And if we plot this one, see that we're going to see that the mesh. It's the same, probably I change a little bit something to reduce the error, but see that it's pretty much the same and it still is converging, okay? So let's work it out with the first one, the one that we have the large error, and then it will be intuitive, the modifications to doing this one or all the cases. So the first thing that we go here is that the first error that we make is that we were using uh, orthogonal in a mesh that is non-orthogonal. So we should go and use limited there, and also limited one here. So now if I go and let me run again, it's diverging again, okay? 
Probably if you check the log files, you will see that here is running a little bit longer, but it still is diverging. Uh, something also that I want to mention that for me is also a standard to plot always, to print always minimum and maximum values of the quantities that I compute. And so this is a good indication of stability. So if at any point you start to see that you have very large values of pressure or velocity, you know that something is going wrong. And this is important to plot because it might happen that you're right, for instance, this situation and the solid will keep iterating. But if you are not printing this one, you will be just iterate, wasting time. Okay. So this is, this is a way just to, to monitor your, your solution. Sometimes it will explode but sometimes it will keep it will keep iterating so that is a standard and you will see that in all my tutorials so what we need to do now okay so we get it better okay so if I go here now and the other correction so now we're using the method that you will we should use okay but maybe you can say okay limited one is for good quality measures in this case we, we it's not a good quality we have this normality problem is you go and you put here 0 0.5 that it might be the default choice or the default choice that i recommend for induced all measures let's run again so if i run again it still is is a variant okay so it pretty much the same behavior okay probably you can check and maybe so yeah if i recall well, previously this one will, was exploding. It was 10 to the, I know 70 or something like that. See here that is key is is bounded. Okay, we're getting something better, but the problem is that it still is a virgin. So remember that you have also this correction, but also you need to combine this one. Okay, you need to 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 put together with this one corrections. So see that we're doing two corrections. Okay, and we are going to look at this north on correction. So if I increase this one and let me put five. So if you look at this previous, this lot five, see that you have one, two corrections. So now let me run with five. It still is diverging. Okay. But see that you have here the five corrections. And what is interesting about these corrections or how many corrections do I need to add? Because here you, 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 you can go and you can put 10, probably too much 10. Okay, it's not, I don't recommend to go 10. This is still the version is you, when you're putting five corrections, your problem is your mesh. But see that 10 and it's still the version. It, it went a little bit further, okay, in time, but it's diverging so we need somehow to add another correction but regarding this one i think a good value to put for don't know those norotonal correction is such a way that you have a reduction in the residuals of one order of magnitude so probably here putting three corrections is okay so you go from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 okay very fast and then we have another correction which is this one the and correctors the outer load okay so if we increase this one to two now let's see what happens see that now what you are doing one correction with the three non corrections and then the second correction so when you do this one you are always getting better approximation for the gradients okay so the problem here is that we have is the gradients that we are putting in the laplacian so by putting this we are getting the solver uh, to, to converge, we're stabilizing the solution as we get better approximations. And just to make it clear also something about uh, what we're doing with an outer corrector. So let me show you what is the loop that we have. So basically this is what we have. When we're solving the Laplacian, you have this loop that you have pressure equation and momentum corrector. So when you do the non-orthogonal correction, correction is this one, okay? But then when you do the momentum corrector, you are adding the second outer corrector, which will correspond to this one. So here you are going to correct for the orthogonality that, let's say, uh, second grading that, 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 that you get, you get there, secondary grading that you get due to an or, an orthogonality. But it still is a good idea to get good approximations that you want to put in this one. So when you do here, you are getting one approximation and then you put two a second approximation and you will reduce all the truncations error but also you make your solution more stable so this is what we're doing so if we go back here 
drone sampling so that we have now a very good agreement so we solve now the problem in a mesh that is a bad mesh it's not by no metr by no metrics that you can use that is can, can be considered a good mesh you see that we have a very good agreement between the orthogonal mesh and this orthogonal one but let me go further a little bit more okay so see that now here you are computing gradients doing this north orthogonal correction but see that now here the values are, are installed after two, uh, two iterations in north orthogonal see that they are not reducing too much so this is an indication that maybe it would be better to instead of using three you can use two two is more than enough so as you go now and as you run with two corrections see that you have that one order of magnitude reduction that I mentioned. So this is that bias. You go from a large error for, for, <clears throat> for, a, for a large value to reduce it to by an order of magnitude. And probably you can see that maybe also we can use one instead of one or so on, we can use instead of two, we can use one. And it, yes, it's true, but in this case, I don't recommend you. I recommend you to use at least one or and and one outer uh, and one corrector. Okay, if you have measures that the quality is not very good, it's better to use at least two. That is, the, this is the case, and this is my standard setup. Okay, for industrial difficult measures, two and two, two n correctors and two non orthogonal correctors and then you let it run the simulation and then as you start to see that you are converging fast maybe you can just use instead of two or non orthogonal correctors use one and also instead of of two or n correctors you can use one but first at the beginning always try to put more correctors and then monitor your solution always so now let me do the sampling and see still we have the same good agreement okay and we reduce the time okay so here you see the importance of, of using that also well in this case it's a very interesting case because you can play with many things you can play with the solver so in this case look at that for velocity and using the solver that but it might not be the best choice okay so here now you are going this is not going to improve the stability this just is it might improve the convergence speed. So maybe this solver, it might be a little bit faster than the previous one. Okay, so the scope of this tutorial is not to talk about the SV solution, it's just to focus on SV skin, but have in mind that this will have also an influence in the convergence speed. Okay, so you can play around with this as well and you can just clap your solutions. S then the other thing that I want to mention as well that we have it running here let me stop okay and let me go back to this setup that the idea also is adding this correction is just to make your solver more stable so you see that here we're running with this delta t okay that is giving me this cfl number so let me go and double this one and go let me go to 0 0.1 okay so see that i went to 0 0.1 Something that previously it was converging, now is divergence. Look at my CFL number, it's 392. Okay, so see that here we start to see the problem that I may remember I mentioned that you would like to have here a reduction of this initial residual by at least an order of magnitude, but here it's not reducing, it's not going to at least 10 to the minus 2. So here, if we maybe increase this to five, we might improve that convergence and see that is the result. So see that here, after three corrections, we have that reduction of that order of magnitude, okay? And see that is converging. And here now you need to get the balance because now you see here that the CFL is very high, it's 10, okay? So let me do the sampling and see that we have some problems here with the solution, okay? So even if, if it is converging, it's not something acceptable, okay? So there are many oscillations there. So the correction now that we need to add, maybe it would be better to increase this. Let me put three and three. So here you will need 
to do that balance, okay? Because maybe you will go to a large time step, but due to the fact that you are doing many corrections, it will be equivalent to using a lower time step. So not always it's a good idea to go large time step because not necessarily will be faster than using a smaller time step. So you see that now by increasing those correction, the outer correction to three, now we get a better matching with the reference solution. And the thing here is that this outer corrector is the one that will give me better approximation for gradients and quantities that we're computing. This one is just correcting for that non-orthogonality, but this one is the one that will give me better gradients. Again, also you might play again uh, with the SV skin, you might play with different uh, interpolation schemes for the gradients that you have, okay? So maybe you can use something like this. Okay, so this is a much better way to compute gradients that you are having the, the, lim the, the gradient limiter. So let's see what happened in this case is we go back to the case two and two, okay? So it might work, it might not work. So let's see that is divergent as well. So let me go and put this one to three and let's see what difference we have or is there is an impact. So it's divergent as well. Okay, so we need to go three, three here. And again, we know that it's going to, to converge. So different schemes also will be, will be a little bit more unstable. Uh, what else I want to tell you here? So uh, something else interesting that maybe there will be another tutorial dedicated, but uh, solvers, the unstable solvers, you can also on the relaxation that it will have the tendency to stabilize the solution. Okay, but again, instead of reducing time step and probably adding this value here to stabilize the solution, it's very to focus instead in look at your mesh, look at the quality, and then add the correction or the, the corrections or the discretization schemes according to that method. So for me, this is a standard for industrial meshes. I go for Gauss linear limited one and limited one here. And then here I use their two and two. Okay, I always use their two and two. And like this. If you have something that it doesn't complain when you run check mesh, you can go and put it one uh, two two here, but here you put one, and then you let it run, and after a while you always moni monitor your solution and maybe you can run do one of these and always monitor that your residuals are falling by uh, an order of magnitude, okay? And then you can reduce this one, okay? By the way, you need to do at least one end corrector. So okay? if you put zero there, you will diverge, so at least one. But that you do it after a while. But for me, always I start like this, okay? Uh, then let's go here, for instance, let me, let me increase here, three and three, okay, this one, I have the standard setup. And let me just show you now. I will go, I increase my time step to 0 0.5. And let's run. So see that as, okay, in this case, it is diverging again. So here maybe have uh, da, 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 75, 32, 22. So let's work it out that here, let me increase. So it might be helpful probably to add here relaxation factors to see if this helps to stabilize the solution. So let's run here and see. If, so see that now this have a clear effect in the solution, okay? So see that it helped to stabilize my solution. So you have to be careful again of how much of this you will add because you add too much, value too low, you will lose the time accuracy. And the point here also that I want to show you that you can go with very large time step and your solution will converge. But remember that you are losing a lot of information. Okay, that large time step is just missing a lot of the physics. So you see that in this case, the CFL is 20. Okay, so you are missing a lot of information in, in your physics. So also, 
Again, it's not a good idea to go to with very large tines. So maybe you can advance fast your solution, but when you are ready to do your sampling, reduce your CFL. Personal experience, probably CFLs up to four or five, you still get good accuracy, okay? But more than five, you start to lose uh, some of the accuracy of your solution. So let's see how far we can go in this back quality mesh, by the way, this is a back mesh. So you use your orthogonal mesh, it will run with no problem. You might need to increase the in outer correctors to two, but you need to add this limited surface, nothing else like that. So let's run now with 0 0.1 and see that this is a very large time step, it's 40, and see that we're losing here some, some of the accuracy. So let me see if by putting here 0 0.9 we can improve a little bit. Okay, as you see, it's very fast the convergence. And see that see that the large difference that we have between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. See that now putting 0 0.9 with this large CFL number, see that we are keeping a good good accuracy. Okay, so this is again be careful uh, with these values. Okay, so you put values too small, you are losing the time accuracy. So probably this was our problem in this case that it was Still, for me, this is a good value, but for the physics dealing here, that was, was adding a lot of diffusion into your solution. So mm -hmm. let me go and put one. So contrary also to the theory that you might think is you put one, you are not under, relax, under relaxing. It's still with one, you are under relaxing, okay? So open from what it's doing is that having some uh, some factor and then it will do some on, on the relax. If you want to turn it off on the relaxation, you need to command this one, okay? So you go like this, comment it, it is totally switch off. See that now it's too large the under relaxation, so the solution is it is not bounded, okay? It is converging, but it's not bounded, okay? So for this case, the ideal value was 0 0.1. 0.9. So now let me go here and let's increase to to two this one. And see that again it's converging. We're losing some accuracy, but now the problem is the tank set very large. Okay, almost 80. So see that in open phone, I have been able to run up to the CFL number of 200, but I know that you are losing a lot of problems. But you have seen here the ways how to stabilize, okay? And this case, remember, we're focusing in non-orthogonality. So remember, the standard practice for you will be Gauss linear limited 0 0.5. Limited 0 0.5 is you have non-orthogonality more than 70. It's less than 70, leave it limited one. And then, my default value, I always like here to put two and two. In this case, you put two and two. We have seen that it will diverge. Okay, so let's run now. See that, okay, it converged, but see that it's not a good solution. So as you increase, usually this one will have the strongest effect in your solution. So as you go there, increase that one to three corrections, it's still, we have a problem. And then if you increase your in non-sonal correctors, we improve our solution. And maybe let me go here, five. So five probably is too high. We need to quantify, but it might say that, yeah, it has a small effect. So, Keep it to two and two default values, okay? If it's divergence, go three, three. But then remember, after a while, you can reduce that one. Uh, yes, on the relaxation, you have seen here that it has an impact in your solution, okay? So it might be a good idea to add it. Okay, so let me go back to the default here, and let me also go back here to the default. Okay, so remember that this should avoid this setup if you have no orthogonality. Okay, so this was this first case, all the Kirsha mesh, so let me clean here. So remember also in the runall, you have all the steps that you can follow. So you have a second mesh. This one is pretty much the same mesh, but you have the check mesh 
warning that you have an orthogonal and you can run this one and the idea to work it out will be, is the same that we did previously okay but this one it is le less severe so you need to go and put that the, that many correctors so let, let, let's work it out here so if i go sv skins so see that here i don't have any error so i can stay with the limited one okay remember that this blending coefficient is just to avoid the north contribution to exceed the the orthogonal contribution so let's try to run this one okay it's still divergent then you go put to here and this should be more than enough and it is working let's see what we have the comparison so just also to stress it out here what we're doing that that or uh, that number that you put after the limited okay which is this one this what it's doing is having it's just to avoid that the non orthogonal contribution just to avoid that becomes larger than orthogonal co contribution so basically you are putting like another limiter here 0 0.5 and this one is always multiplied by that one so it doesn't becomes larger so i see that now a good agreement and let me go to control dit and let me increase this okay let's see the virgin so again yeah it should be something similar to the previous one so probably here is will be enough to put three there okay again it's giving me problems so let me put three three now voila we have our solution so as you see very simple example that you have done a lot and you say okay this is stupid but you see that there is a lot to do there also what will be interesting is that you change your solver SB solution a linear solver also you might have different behaviors there okay so now let's move to the other mesh it's slightly non-orthogonal okay so as you go run all so in this case it's not diverging but see that here we didn't have a good agreement with the reference solution here that we have the red line okay the one for the orthogonal mesh so let's see what is the problem here so as you go into slightly orthogonal and let's open the fuzz control it sv skin and sv solution so as you go to sv skin see that the first error again we're using a orthogonal method where we shouldn't shouldn't use it by the way well we haven't seen the mesh let me show you the mesh so let me go here change this and change this so this is the mesh so it's not that bad okay so if you run check mesh also it won't complain so see that you have 47 this is a good mesh okay but see that by not adding this correction you are losing some accuracy so let me run now again using the limited one in this case limited one is okay but it's one you can go and put it limited 0 0.5 that limiter it is local just in the software you need it okay and also okay let me go back so this will be limiting just the cells where you need that 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 to, to apply that limitation okay and it will be only applied to this there remember and only if that you need to use is you need to is this situation never happened that this one becomes larger than this one you are not going to multiply this one by 0 0.5 whatever number you are putting there so see that here we have a very good agreement now by just simple adding this number here one one and one here the limited one you have that one as you look at the sv solution see that 
and corrector is one. So this setup in the previous mesh was diverging, now it's converging and just mesh quality. But remember, my recommendation is always put here two and two, okay? You start your simulation like this, and as you keep iterating, you just try to change it, reduce it, but always monitor your solution, okay? That you don't have any strange oscillations or unbounded quantities. So let me go here and let me put 0 0.5 because also we might see an influence of the diffusion added by that. Okay, so if I go put there 0 0.5, let's see what happens. Okay, so no, there are no problems. Still, we have a good solution. But sometimes it might happen that you will see that there will be a difference and it might be that you have too many cells, that quality, and you are just erasing too much information. Again, also you should check how many cells of that quality you have. In this case, there are no back cells, but in the previous indication mesh, there are not many cells, but if you have like 50% of the mesh have, uh, has back Non highly non-orthogonal cells, it's better to, to reduce the mesh because you can correct that error, you can reduce it, but remember you will be clipping information from your solution that at the end it will accumulate and you will lose accuracy. And again, we can go on here and I can increase my CFL number. It will diverge, see that this is a good mesh, but it's divergent, so we know that we ne what we need to do just to get better approximation, better gradients, just come here and increase this one to two. This should be enough to make it run. Once see that now it is running, it converts a way much faster. Okay, and then again, you can come and go here to one. So this will be a super fast convergence. Well, okay, it's diverging. So to solve that problem, we can increase in correctors. It's converging super fast, very good accuracy. Or maybe another way to make it converge can be play around also with the relaxation factors. Okay, see that very simple problem, but many things to do to make it stable. So see by adding the under relaxation, we make it to converge as well without the need to increase the number of correctors that sometimes this simple corrector that you add here while iterating can be very expensive, especially if you have large meshes. So, okay, I think, okay, well, again, well, let's plot the solution also. And see that everything perfect, everything has been taken off by just adding the right correction and the right amount of, of cover correction. So feel free to play with this case, play with all the com combinations. It has been prepared enough for that you have seen. So try to play with all combinations and see the influence. But the important message here is the mesh quality and how to, to handle no, uh, non orthogonality. So always use limited. Limited one is your non orthogonality is less than 70. Limited 0 0.5 if it is more than 0 point, is more than 70 in orthogonality. And also increase in SV solution the number of orthogonal correctors and out on and correctors to stabilize the solution. So thank you very much for your, your time. Thank you also for following us and see you next tutorial. Bye.